In this short video, we're going to talk about how to read and understand a tact plan. This video is intended to help anyone who has been given this format or is new to this format so that you can be successful. So that's what we're going to cover in this video and let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see generally in this uh, image, and I know that the way you're looking at it, you can't see the detailed words. I actually don't want you to. I want you to experience that on your own plan, and I'm going to go through this at a high level. If you ever see a tax plan, you're going to see time on the top. Now, when you see a, a time bar on the top that's in weeks, you know it's a macro level tax plan. If you see days on the top, that is a norm level tax plan. And so this example right here for the ease of this video, I'm showing you the macro level tax plan. These are only used in pre-construction and as a high level summary. The schedule that you'll use will likely be in a day by day format in a norm level format. But the bottom line is these schedules are typically formatted on one page with time on the top, and location down the left on the side. You may be used to other schedules where you have deliverable or scope or just specific activities to the left. That's not the way we schedule in tax planning. You'll always find the location on the left. So if you look here, and I'll circle this for you. Again, you don't need to see the words. Right here, this is where the phase is, de is depicted. And then near each one of these rows, there is a zone. So if you were able to see this, you would see level one, level two, level three. Um, and if it was zone, it would be zone, well, they are zones, but uh, zone one, zone two, zone three, what I mean is if they weren't just levels. The zones are shown here, typically right next to the actual sequences. Now, what I want you to understand is that you're going to be looking for a start date, something that kicks the project off, and you're always going to be looking for, hey, what is your substantial completion or your completion date? This forms the parameters of your plan and it enables you to know how your phases and zones work. So that's first and foremost, time on the top, uh, phases and zones on the left, and you're looking for your start and your end parameters. Now, you've probably noticed these really cool colors. It's pretty, you're probably fooled by a little bit, Ah, eh, that's simple. They're just trying to make a nice format. Well, actually, this is genius. If you look at like one of these colors, when you see these colors going at a beautiful diagonal, what that means is that this contractor has protected trade flow. They have protected you. You are able to go from zone to zone to zone to zone to zone to zone in a flowable, even fashion and they're not going to do what I call trade burdening or zone stacking where they have you all over the place and you're hurting people and wasting money. So this is a good thing. Tax plans are amazing for trade partners. Tax plans are amazing for everyone and it's because it protects that trade flow. So if you're like, wait a minute, what do you mean by trade? If you take any one of these colors, for instance, 3C, and you come over here to the left and you look at this beautiful legend and you're like, what is 3C? Well, if you could see it, and I'll read it to you, it says plumbing and plumbing inspection. That means that we go uh, down here. Well, actually, let me go up here where I was before. We go to level one area A here, level one area B here, level two area A here, level two area B here in a nice diagonal flow so that you can make money and everyone can work evenly on the project. So if you want to know what these colors mean, always come over here to the legend. They are detailed out. Now, this is called a tacked wagon. This may have one or multiple actual trades, tasks, or scopes, and even contractors packaged within them. But it's done intentionally, meaning that it's natural that they're working there together. And so you need to be very careful and cautious and watch how the tacked wagons are packaged. Now, when you look at each one of these zones, this right here from left to right is called a sequence. That sequence 
repeats on a rhythm and stacks on top of itself because you work by zones. This zone to 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 this zone, okay? So this sequence was an original part of your pull plan and it's repeated through the zones and again, it protects that trade flow. So every tack plan you see should also show you the zones just like you've seen here. So when you see, hey, uh, you know, uh, building one uh, first area, you know, where is building one first area? Right here. Where's building one second area? Right here. Where's building uh, 4A, 4B? It's all listed in the zone maps. Now a couple more things that you need to know. A lot of times on the top you will see a specific types of days, whether they're weather days or buffer days. Uh, you will see things like holidays, whether it's Christmas or Thanksgiving or the 4th of July. You will see summaries and milestones up here at the top. And there's one more component I really want to bring your mind to. Those identify where they happen in the schedule. And then from phase to phase, you have these interdependence ties. And these list out and line out the connections from phase to phase to phase. So in its simple format, uh, simplest format, you can say, where am I? What is my contract? What is my color? Where am I? Does it work? And do, do the phases work together? Now, one of the most important things I want to bring your mind to are the buffers at the end of the schedule. Every schedule must have buffers in order for it to work properly and for us to be able to absorb delays. So at the minimum, at its most basic form, this is how you read and understand a tack plan. Remember, it's time by location and the colors are the crews or the trades and everything else is showing the interconnections, the relationships with each other, the relationships with the circumstances and the buffers. I hope you've enjoyed this brief video. On we go.